Duxford, Battle Britain Airfield, home to Britain's largest collection of historic aircraft, and home to the most iconic Luftwaffe relic of the Battle of Britain, a Messerschmitt 109. But what's its story, and how did it avoid the scrap man's axe for 80 years? Now, with previously unseen material from the Englishman who saved it, the wing leader team can reveal the full, remarkable story. In early 1962, just 17 years after the end of World War II, rumours began to circulate that an ME-109 had been seen in a scrapyard in Canada. The swinging 60s were on the horizon, and most people were looking to the future. There was little interest in looking back on the terrible war that had so recently taken so many lives. Luckily for us, there were still a few historians around, like retired army officer Dennis Knight. As a schoolboy, Dennis had watched the battles fought in the skies over his home in South London. This inspired him to record what information he could find out about them, from eyewitnesses and local records, or writing to wartime pilots, and even recovering parts of crashed aircraft. In March 1962, Dennis wrote to Jeff Rowe, an aircraft enthusiast in Canada, who knew where the Messerschmitt was. Jeff wrote back, It's in the Baker Brothers scrapyard in Ontario under a pile of three old cars. Although the scrap value was just 15 pounds, the wily Baker Brothers knew what they had, and Jeff simply couldn't afford it. Dennis agreed to purchase the wreck for the then considerable sum of £75. But by then, yet another car had been dumped on it. Jeff and some friends extracted the wreck and moved it to the safety of his home. The Messerschmitt had been saved, but its identity was still unknown. Jeff Rowe set out to examine the wreck in detail. The aircraft's serial number was 1190, but no one had a list of Luftwaffe serial numbers in 1962, so it meant nothing. At least one of the wings came from a completely different aircraft. The only clues lay in the fading and peeling paintwork, which showed the Schlagetter S badge, part of a lion's head, and double chevron markings. This made no sense until Jeff realized that a white four had been painted over the chevron. Back in the UK, Dennis had been collecting photographs of down Messerschmitts in Britain, and one photograph from an Eastbourne newspaper matched. It had crash-landed on September the 30th, 1940 near Eastbourne, on the south coast of England, and was flown by Unterofficer Horst Pires of Forstaffel JG-26. 22-year-old Unteroffizier Perez had been flying at 28,000 feet, almost six miles high over England when his engine failed. A chance bullet had fractured a coolant pipe, the engine had overheated, and the luckless Perez was forced to glide down and make a crash landing. Soldiers enthusiastically ran to his stricken aircraft, and one of them even fired at the poor pilot who was climbing out of his cockpit. A bullet hit one of Perez's hands, and the other struck his jaw. Wounded, Horst Perez was marched into captivity. The unusually intact Messerschmitt was tested by the RAF, then shipped across the Atlantic to go on show across America to raise war funds. As it toured the length and breadth of North America, countless people carved their names, hometown and dates into its paintwork. After the war, the Messerschmitt was sent to Ontario, Canada, and finally sold as scrap, ending up with the Baker Brothers, hidden away. Dennis's friend and fellow historian Peter Foote was keen to be involved in the project, so he volunteered to house the Messerschmitt in his workshop on Hearn Airfield and use his knowledge to conserve the airframe. He also offered to contribute half of the purchase price in installments. So Peter set to work, not on the sensitive conservation that had initially been agreed, but on a full nut and bolt rebuild that would have literally stripped the aircraft of its history. 
Dennis wasn't happy, and, unable to reach a compromise, the aircraft languished in a shed for over 30 years, as the dispute between the two erstwhile friends became ever more acrimonious. In 1997, an attempt was made to negotiate a deal to secure the aircraft for the nation, to be displayed by the Imperial War Museum. Peter Foote had by now claimed exclusive ownership, but could not provide any proof of his claim. Dennis Knight was asked what the legal status of the airframe was. In a remarkable gesture of generosity and with the agreement that 1190 would be permanently displayed and preserved for the nation, Dennis relinquished his claim of ownership. An undisclosed sum, believed to be into six figures, was paid to Peter Foote, who died four years later. After arriving at Duxford, 1190 was prepared for display by the aircraft restoration company that made the missing fuselage and wing parts. A new tail was fabricated in Germany to complete the aircraft. Up to 350,000 people visit the Imperial War Museum at Duxford every year and now have a chance to admire one of the rarest Battle of Britain relics in the world.